Hello, thanks for joining this virtual talk about custom digital net constructions, algorithms and software. So my name is Pierre Marion, I'm a first year PhD student at Sorbonne University and an engineer at Cordemin. So this is a joint work with Pierre Lécuyer and Maxime Godin. So Pierre Lécuyer is a professor at the University of Montreal and uh, Maxime and myself were uh, visiting research students at the University of Montreal when most of this work was done. <clears throat> so, um, to begin with, let's, let us do a quick review on QMC sampling to introduce what the talk is about. So for QMC sampling, we need three main ingredients. The first ingredient is a parameterized method to construct um, well-distributed point sets. Uh, so there are lots of such methods, such as lattices, but the one we will focus on for this talk is called digital nets. Uh, we will explain quickly what digital nets, the digital nets are, but if you want more information, please refer to the book by Dick and Pelisham. The second ingredient is a measure of non-uniformity of the points. So again, there are lots of measures that are, exist out there, such as the t-value or other discrepancies. Um, but something that would be interesting is to be able to choose a custom measure depending on the problem at hand. Um, so we will explain a little bit later what uh, sort of customization you could do, but what you need to know for now is that maybe you have a, a very specific problem and you want the, the specificities of your problem to reflect on how you measure the uniformity of the point sets. And then the third ingredient is a method to find the best possible parameters of your parameterized method. Um, so what people usually do is that they choose off-the-shelf parameters. But perhaps uh, if you could look for custom parameters according to your custom measure, then the results for your problem would be better. So the goal today is first to present a software that allows you to do that, and second to present one of the algorithms that powers that software uh, and helps it compute efficiently the t-value of digital nets. Um, so to begin with, we will do a short uh, recap on what's digital nets. Uh, then we will introduce the software and do a quick demonstration. Um, then we will explain our algorithm to compute efficiently the t-value before concluding. So um, what's a digital net? So again, if you want more details, please refer to the book by Dick and Pelishama. Um, so. Um, we, let's say we want to generate n points that we take to be 2 to the power k for some k and we choose some dimension s. Then our parameters uh, that we will want to optimize later will be s matrices m1 to ms that are square k times k matrices with, with elements, with, by, they are binary elements, uh, sorry, binary matrices. So the elements are in 0, 1. Um, then, uh, to generate point number i, for some i between 0 and 2 to the power k minus 1, we begin by writing the binary decomposition of i. Um, so it has k digits uh, that are either 0 or 1 in this binary decomposition, and this gives us a vector. Then uh, we for some coordinate L between 1 and S, we multiply this vector by uh, the matrix ML. We take the modulus 2 and this gives us another vector. So this, vectors, uh, this vector depends on the, num of the, on the coordinate L on I, which is the number of the points you want to generate, and it has K components. And you will consider this k components as the um, decomposition in base 2 of a certain number. And so this formula uh, retrieves this number, so multiplies the coordinate, uh, the, sorry, the decomposition by some 2 to the power minus j. And this gives a number between 0 and 1, which is the lth coordinate of point number i. And you do that for all i and all l, and this gives you uh, a point set. 
So let us take an example to make sure we understand correctly. Um, so let's say a very simple example. Let's say we have we are in dimension two and we want to generate two to the power eight points. So to do that, we will choose the following points. So they are written in binary coordinates here. So this is uh, coordinate one, coordinate two. For coordinate one, we uh, so we take the binary decomposition with eight digits and we go in the increasing order. So we begin by zero, then we put a one on the last digit, then one, zero, etc. in the increasing order. For the second coordinate, so it's called the van der Koput sequence and it's the reverse. So, uh, I mean, it's uh, symmetrized. So here the one, instead of being on the last coordinate, it's on the, f on the last uh, digit, sorry, is on the first digit. Then instead of having one zero on the last digits, you have zero one on the first digits, etc. Uh, and it's left an as, in, as an exercise to, to the reader to find which matrix you need to generate these coordinates. Um, and they are very simple matrices. Um, and if you do that, you obtain the point set that looks like that. So it looks very well equidistributed. And to uh, measure how well equidistributed it is, one way to do is the following. Um, it is to uh, split your, I, uh, your unit cube into small boxes that have the same size, um, and so small rectangles, and to count the number of points that appear in each rectangle. And here you can trust me or check if you want, there is one point in each box. So we think it's well equidistributed because the points are a little bit everywhere. And we can change the shape of the boxes uh, to make them more uh, like smaller and, uh, and uh, higher. And uh, again, there will be one uh, point per box. And we can do that again and again. And uh, on each configuration here, there is one point per box. And this is the basis of the T value, which we will we'll explain later uh, as a measure of um, equidistribution. Um, okay. So um, now that we know kind of what digital nets are, the question is, is how to find the good matrices. Because um, so there are binary matrices, uh, S k times k matrices, so there are 2 to the power k squared times s possibilities, so that's a lot, and we want to find efficiently good matrices among all these possibilities. Um, so to do that, what people usually do is that they take standard constructions, so um, um, one very common construction is called Sobol construction. Um, and here again, it's parameterized, but people usually take Joan Quo direction numbers. And there are a number of software where you can find this construction uh, that is readily available. A second very well-known construction is the Hamilton sequence. And here again, it's available in a number of softwares. But in some cases, maybe it's not enough to take these standard constructions. Uh, for instance, if you want to integrate some function f um, and you take its ANOVA decomposition and you realize that on some projections, u, uh, it has more variance, then perhaps you want to make sure then on, that on these projections, your point set is really well equidistributed to lower the variance. So, when you look for your um, equidistribution measure, perhaps you want to put more weight on these projections in your measure. Then the second thing you, you might want to do is to have nested point sets. So what we call uh, multi-level point sets in uh, LatNet Builder. So the idea here is that you start your uh, integration, for instance, with a certain number of points, and then you, re you realize it's not enough and you want to double the number of points. Um, and you want to do that efficiently. So to make sure that the, so the first points you take are well equidistributed. And when you add the same number of points again, you want to make sure that in total it stays well equidistributed. So we want to construct some nested sequence where at each level uh, you have some equidistribution guarantee. And you want to put that into your equidistribution measure to, to reflect that idea. 
Um, then the third thing you might want to do is to have a specific uh, quality measures, so equidistribution measures that we call figures of merit in LatNet Builder. And here the idea is that perhaps the function you want to integrate is in some specific function space. And for that function space, you know a very good figure of merit uh, that would really um, diminish the variance um, of your integration and you want to find a good point set for that figure of merit. And then the last idea you might want to implement is interlaced point sets, uh, where instead of, where you take several digital nets and you kind of mix them together to get an even better one. Um, so to do that, if you want to do all these, you can't uh, use uh, standard digital net constructions, you have to find your own digital net. Um, and so to do that, uh, in our knowledge, there is like one uh, uh, software that does that, which is Dirk Nguyen's work. And uh, we really refer to his work if you are in a PDE setting, uh, because it's a great work, uh, please go and uh, take a look. But if you are not in this setting, that may then maybe it's not the best uh, software for you because it's a little bit specialized. And please let me know if I forgot anything, like if you know of some s software, please let me know. Um, Okay, so to kind of fill in this uh, void, uh, we developed at University of Montreal LatNet Builder, which is a software tool for constructing uh, highly uniform point sets. So as of now, lattice rules and digital nets uh, are supported. Um, so I have both ordinary and polynomial lattice rules. So it has been developed since 2012 uh, by with uh, it's hosted on GitHub, has nearly 700 commits and five core contributors. So Pierre Lecuyer for the um, like overall supervision and then for the code, uh, Maxime Godin, Eman Gemel, David Munger and myself. It's written in C++, but has interfaces in Python and Java. And finally, it's integrated with another, another software from University of Montreal, uh, which you may know, which is called the Stochastic Simulation in Java. Um, so now we'll, so, and here are a couple of links for uh, like documentation and explanations. Uh, so now we will like demonstrate the software. Oh no, sorry, before demonstrating, um, uh, like a quick overview of the features. Um, so, construction methods are what we are the uh, space of par parameters we explore to find good digital nets. So the first constru construction uh, uh, that I already mentioned mentioned is a Sobol construction, and here the parameter we optimize is are the direction numbers. Then we also support polynomial lattice rules, and here we optimize for the generating vector. And we also support explicit construction. So here we optimize directly for the generating matrix. Um, okay, then once we construct this uh, set of parameters, we need some way to explore the space of parameters to find the best one. Um, so the, we have two main exploration methods. The first one is uh, like random exploration, and the second one is component by component. So we, so it's a greedy method where we start with the first coordinate, we f optimize it, then we optimize the second one, etc., until the end. And then it has a couple of variants where you basically ra randomize this uh, method. Um, then we also support three figures of merits, so equidistribution um, measures, uh, the p-alpha discrepancy, the r criterion, and then the t-value, and also its variance, which I will touch upon later. And then we also support other features, which I already introduced earlier. Um, so now uh, uh, it's time for the demo. So you can also try it yourself. Uh, so you may pause me now and have a look at the link which is there. And if you scroll down at some point, you will see a red button with a binder written on it. And if you click it, it will open uh, an online demo. You have to wait a couple of minutes for the demo to boot up. And then the interface will be very similar to the graphical interface, which I present. So you can click on, your, on the buttons yourself. So 
The software has a command line interface, so the commands begin by latent builder, then you can look for the help. So at the top level, you have to choose the point set type between lattice and net. Uh, so let us say we want to build a net. Um, so we will choose T, uh, the option T net, and then we can look for the help again. And there you have a lot of options. Um, so you can choose the um, construction type, the dimension of the net, um, the size parameter, so the modulus of the net, um, the exploration method, figure of merit, um, and then more advanced uh, features. So interlacing factor, uh, the norm type, the weights, um, and then the like more features than you can look at after the talk. Um, so for instance, we can choose um, so type mm. net, uh, the construction method we can choose Sobol, and then the dimension 3 for instance, uh, the size would be for instance um, 2 uh, to the power 10. Um, uh, the weights can be for instance product weights, um, the exploration method can be uh, uh, component by component, for instance. Uh, then we also choose the figure of merit. Uh, and, um, and the norm type. Then we press enter and we have a summary of, uh, what we, of the parameters we choose and then the result of the exploration. And uh, so that's a very small net, but then we can choose a higher dimension, for instance, and it will output the result. Um, but then, as you can see, uh, the um, command line is a little bit uh, long and not very intuitive. So we also offer um, a graphical user interface. The graphical user interface is uh, in a web browser it uh, runs in a Jupyter notebook. So Jupyter is an open source uh, web application that allows uh, interactive computing. Um, so uh, to launch the interface, uh, you just have to press twice on the run button here, and then the interface appears. So on the top, you can choose between uh, lattices and uh, digital nets. So if you choose digital nets, um, then you have the same options as in the uh, command line interface, except that it's nicer since there is the graphical interface. So for instance, for the construction method, we can choose a polynomial this time. And then for the modulus, let us choose two to the power uh, 12 and then we can uh, s choose the dimension 5. We can specify if you want a multi-level figure of merit here. Uh, we can also choose the interlacing factor. Um, then there are the exploration method methods, so we can stay with uh, CPC. Um, the figure of merit, so we can say stay with P alpha and the coordinate uniform evaluation. Um, and then there are the weights. So by default, you have order dependent weights, but you can uh, remove them and uh, add, uh, for instance, product weights. And here you can uh, choose the, um, the weights per coordinate. So for instance, here by default, it's 0.8 for all coordinates, but let's say you want a 0.4 for the last two ones, you can change that. And then at the bottom, you have the search button. Um, and if you click it, then it searches for the best digital net. You have also a construct command line button. If you click on it, then it prints the command line that you need to put into the command line interface to get the same results. So the uh, graphical interface is also useful to help you construct command lines. Um, because they are quite long and difficult to construct. And then, so 
um, at the bottom you have the result of the exploration, so the generating uh, vectors here, and you have a plot uh, of the points um, on a, like a projection on two coordinates, and you can change the coordinates to like explore how well the points are equidistributed, and the final feature is. Uh, code generation in C++, Python, and R that allows you to actually generate the points. So here, for instance, in C++, you have uh, the, some code, and if you copy-paste it, uh, it will give you... So there is a main function at the bottom, and uh, this main function actually generates the, these points. So you can recognize here the generating vector that was uh, like that was formed by the exploration. Um, and then there is the same thing in Python and in R. So basically, once you found the points using the interface, you can just copy paste the generated code and use these points in your software. Okay, so now that we know um, what the software does and hopefully you understand the interest of using it um, for generating point sets for your integration or simulation problem, I'm going to delve a little bit more into one of the algorithm that is used in the software. So um, first, let me explain um, an equidistribution measure that I already touched upon, which is called the t-value. Um, so, uh, to, to compute the t-value, let's do a, a, as follows. So, we want to divide each axis of our hypercube in 2 to the power qg equal parts for each uh, j, uh, uh, which is the coordinate. And so, this gives a lot of boxes that have the same size. So, this number of boxes. And then you count the number of points that appear in each box. And um, if each box has the same number of points, then we say that the point set is Q1 to QS equidistributed. So that's what is happening here. Um, and here in each example, there are like two points in each box. Um, so now we are nearly at the T value. Um, so we say that Pn is a TKS net if it's Q1 to QS equidistributed for every Q1 to QS whose sum equals K minus T. So here, uh, as a reminder, S is the dimension of uh, the net, K is the logarithm of the number of points, and T uh, is some parameter. And the lower T, the better this property. So we want to look for the lowest t such that this property holds, and this is called the t-value. So uh, remark that this property always holds if t, t equals k, and it nearly never holds if t equals 0. So t is somewhere between 0 and k. And we want to find nets that have low t. Um, but to, in order to do that, the first step is to compute to be able to compute efficiently this uh, this t value. Um, so how can we do this? Um, because it looks very complicated, right? Because we have to compute it's we have to compute lots lots of uh, boxes. So and then for loop through all the points and uh, look in which box they they appear. So it's very long if you have lots of points. Um, and the goal is to do faster than that. So to do faster than that, uh, it's actually possible with some linear algebra. Uh, uh, okay, I'm going to skip this because I don't have time. Um, and this also. Uh, so um, you please have a look to the slides I skipped uh, uh, if you want later. So uh, for the linear algebra. So remember that the matrices we want to optimize over look like this. So if you're in dimension 3 for in, in this example uh, and you want to generate 2 to the power 4 points, you will have 3 matrices that are 4 by 4. And uh, to compute the t-value for this, so they define your net, right? You only need these matrices to define your net. And so to compute the t-value for this net, uh, one way is as follows. So you will, it's, it uh, boils down to rank computation. So you compute first the rank of your first mat matrix, M1, then uh, you 
swap, you, you take the two first rows of M1 and the first row of M2, and you compute the rank of that. And you continue like that. So you take every combination of first rows, right? And you want to compute the rank of all these matrices. And uh, so I don't have time to explain, but this, actually is very, this uh, computation will give you the T value. Um, so potentially it's, that's a huge number of matrices you want to compute the rank of. And because the rank is, uh, basically computing the rank is something like big O of uh, K square, uh, that's very long. But uh, one possible optimization, and that's like the topic of uh, the paper that we wrote, uh, is the following. Uh, so you can see that be you can order the matrices such as between two consecutive matrix, only one row changes. And after you do that, it's much simpler because you can compute uh, the uh, rank of the first matrix and then update your computations for the second matrix in a linear time instead of quadratic time because they are nearly the same, only one row changes. And you continue like that. So for every matrix except the first one, you pay only a linear price instead of a quadratic price. Um, so um, that's, I refer to this paper if you want to know more, but basically the result is that the complexity, instead of being linear in the number of points, it's uh, logarithmic in the number of points because you have two to the power k points and you pay only a price that is polynomial in k. Whereas in previous baselines, uh, like you pay the price that was at least linear in the number of points. Uh, but the price, to pay for that is that the um, cost is now uh, exponential in the dimension, whereas in the baseline by Dick and Matsumoto, it was linear in the dimension. So it's a trade-off between number of points and dimension. But we think that it's not a very big deal for us because the usual setting of quasi Monte Carlo is to have a low dimension and a high number of points. So that's the setting in which we are performant. Um, and if you are in a high dimension, and you want to use quasi Monte Carlo, often what you will do actually is that the effective dimension will be low. And that's because if it weren't low, then quasi Monte Carlo would not work very well. Um, and, um, and so the idea here is to find a figure of merit that reflects the fact that the uh, effective dimension is low, for instance, by putting weights only on low dimensional projections. And if you do that, then our uh, algorithm applies and can help you compute um, projection dependent T value very quickly. And again, I refer to this paper uh, for um, for more information on projection dependent T value. Um, and finally, you have uh, some numerical experiments that show that indeed uh, our method performs well when the number of points is high and the dimension is not too high, whereas other baselines perform better in other settings. Um, Okay, so um, thank you for listening uh, up to the end. So as a wrap up, um, so generating your own digital nets uh, might be really beneficial for your use cases uh, instead of think, taking standard constructions. And uh, we made a significant software development effort to uh, help you do that easily. Um, so please, uh, if you're interested and want to try out the uh, software, uh, go ahead and uh, give us feedback uh, if, you, if you have any, uh, that would be very welcome. Um, um, and if you have any questions, so since uh, it's not a live talk, I, can, I cannot answer them now, but please uh, write to me and I will try to answer in a timely fashion. Uh, so thank you for listening again and goodbye.